This episode is brought to you by CarterComics.com. It's your one-stop shop for all your comic needs, whether it be graded or raw. Carter Comics has got it all. All you gotta do is go to CarterComics.com, fill your card up with all their amazing comics. Use the discount code FREAKNET, F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T. Save you 10% at checkout. Not only on their website, but also at their eBay account. And the link to eBay can be found on their homepage at CarterComics.com. Again, CarterComics.com is your one-stop shop for all comic needs. It's, uh, I, have this, I have this weird idea that, like, my, my body, unlike everyone else's, I mean, at, like everyone else, will go through, uh, you know, like, the steps that are needed for certain things. Like, uh, like smoking. Mm. Once you start quitting smoking, then, you know, everything starts breaking up in your lungs. Everything, you start hacking it up and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going through that, but I'm not going through it as rapidly as everyone else. Like I, mm-hmm. I haven't, smoked, I haven't smoked since the end of May, right? And uh, just now, I think I'm finally in part one of lungs clearing out. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah. So I, I don't know. I just, I, I just hate like when I'm sitting there and I'm talking on the phone. We've been like right now. I feel it building up right here. Mm-hmm. And especially when it's at work and I'm like, <clears throat> somebody walking by as soon as I'm trying to get their attention. Mm. So I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I hate it. I mean, I know there's, if at one point during our show that we're doing right now, I do that and somebody off to the side is having to say yes, I'm going to be freaked out. So mm-hmm. just, just, oh, so cool thing. By the way, thank you for tuning in. I'm Travis Steve. And then Cartoon Joe. <laughs> Cartoon Joe didn't know we were doing a cold open. Here we are. It's whatever. Nope, I had no idea. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, wow, Travis D feels really odd right now. That's because I was. That's because I was. Like, I, well, that's the thing. Because, like, I mean, like, I loved when we were doing the cold open stuff because it's like, like, so much of our pre show conversations were entertaining. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's so, definitely like the haircut I got when I was talking about the barber and everything. And, I, and that's what I say. I don't even know what to call her. Like, because she's not technically a barber. She's just, you know, she's a hairstylist, you know. But, you know, when you, when a 35 year old heavy set, you know, guy says, like, oh, I'm going to go to the hairstylist today, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, people look at you like, oh, that's cute. You know, get my but, hair styled. Just, right? Go get my hair did and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I finally got to the point where it's like, yeah, I got a haircut appointment, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. back then, he's, you know, not back then, but before, I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to my uh, hairstylist friend and get my uh, hair uh, trimmed up and everything. But, um, but yeah, for anyone who saw the last episode of this freaking show, completely different. Beard is beard is trimmed up and looks a little bit nicer. Hair is mm-hmm. all hair is all done. Uh, what grownups should be doing is making themselves more presentable in life. You know, like I'm okay with people wanting to be comfortable. Oh but, yeah. But I think there's a there's a true fine line between comfortable and lazy. And I think I I think I, I surf that line like way too often, I think. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, Yeah, because I, I know I, I know I need to be better as being more proactive, active. Uh, you know, I need it's just I need to I need to be more in general. And uh I felt like, you know, doing the haircut thing was a good step one. Yeah. There's something <laughs> about a haircut that really, like, makes you feel like a person. And oh, it can be very motivating. 100%. Here, I, I, I'll, pu- I'm, I'll post uh, pictures uh, in the video when I do the editing and everything. But I want to show you two. I'm going to send you two different pictures in, fa- in Facebook Messenger. And if, if you really, really look at it, You'll be able to see the difference in the before and after, not just the physical image, but my facial expression. Because in my mind, when I took both these pictures, I was making the same face. But so this is what I looked like. Uh, 
before. Yeah, to me, that look was the same as this look. <clears throat> and then when I sat there and I looked at them both and kind of it's like, oh, well, okay, so yeah, the hair looks better, the beard looks better. Looking at my face, the long haired pre cut face that I have is a face of uncertainty. Mm. To where the freshly cut face, like, this feels good. And I think people don't really appreciate how well getting, you know, your hair cut, your beard trim, your, even your eyebrows trimmed up, then back of your neck all cleaned up and everything, how much that can really just, like, subconsciously make you feel better. Mm -hmm. You know? And, um, <clears throat> uh, and I, I, I got Kelly to, to, uh, to thank for that. Uh, uh, she's been cutting my hair for a little over a decade now. And I, I told her flat out the very first time she cut my hair. Um, I told her flat out, like, like you are the person I'm going to be coming to going forward. You know, I, there are three things in my life that I value physically on my person more than anything else. And obviously, it's not my health, which it should be. But it's hair, eyes, and beard, because I believe those are my best features. I believe from neck up. Gorgeous. Neck down, gross. Mm. Like, a, like, a, like a dirty bag inside the dumpster fire. Like you can't even melt it because it is so encased in like goo. Like it mm. just will not burn. Like that's how neck down, ugh. but up, I look great. I am very photogenic neck up. High angles, looking down, it just, it just works. So I take pride in this for the most part. <clears throat> Clearly, if you look at the video stuff, you see I got like weird bags under my eyes. That's because I haven't understand the concept of sleep, how necessary sleep is. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a process. Yeah, you know, it's 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 utilizing that CPAP every single day, but also getting in the bed at a decent time. In a non-military time, single-digit bedtime is something I also need to work on. That's tough. That's tough. It is. It's just because the thing is too is like and and I can't blame it on I can't blame it on JFW for Monday because we could you know sometimes we record at five thirty sometimes we record at six and we may get done uh, somewhere around like maybe seven thirty eight o'clock sometimes we'll stay on and talk a little bit afterwards but not that much longer and stuff but then for the next few hours I'm just rambling around the house it's just like. <clears throat> like, there's no reason for me to be up at 11 o'clock looking at my phone and looking at Instagram videos. Like, there's just right. no reason. Like, I should be sleeping. You know, my alarm goes off at 6 a.m. You know, there's no reason I should be snoozing it until 6.40 and then running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to jump in the shower, get cleaned up, get Cooper out, get my stuff together, get dressed and get out, out the, the door. door and on the road, you know? So those are those are more like, like, <clears throat> uh, this is more like the uh, getting better at, you know, just being more proactive, more active. You know, very similar to the conversation we had before. It's like it's like it's like if I want the change, I have to be part of the change. If I want the results, I have to enact those results and stuff. I can't just have the expectations of. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed and then I'm gonna wake up and you know I'm just gonna wake up and I'm gonna want to get out of bed. Like absolutely fucking not. Like I deprive my body of so much sleep all the time. It's ridiculous. Perfect example. Just last night, which is kind of why I'm thinking about this so often now, or not so often, but why I'm thinking about it at this moment. <clears throat> I went and got my hair cut after work and uh, my appointment was at like 5:30. I was late because I was doing work stuff. I was late, but she was cool with it. I didn't get home until I think it was like 7.15, quarter after 7, 7.30. And I played this Grand Theft Auto role-playing game. I think I've talked about it. I may have mentioned it to you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they have these, they call them storms, but what it is, it's just a reset of the server. And they do it every, uh, what is it, every six hours. And uh, um. At seven o'clock Eastern is the evening storm. Now, if for us six o'clock, if I'm not in that city by six o eight, 
not getting into the city. There's way hmm. too many people trying to get in. There's a cap of 300 people. And if I try to get in at like 615, I'm going to be in a queue waiting to get in of like 80 something people. It's gotcha. like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there for hours on end hoping to get into the city. So if I'm not in by 608, I'm not getting in. That's it. My, I'm good. Not getting in tonight. It's fine. But you know, it's whatever, you know, I don't, you know, <clears throat> it's okay. Um, Is that just to week, give people, everyone an opportunity to play? What do you mean? What is what is what does the reset of the server do? Is it just kick oh. everybody off and get rid of clear the cash? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, make it gotcha. just to make it easier to run and stuff. I was uh, I was talking to uh, which is cool because I kind of I've actually met like a like a friend friend that now I talk to out of city from the city. Uh, she's a really cool person. Lives in Florida. Uh, she's a first responder. Uh, hopefully, you know everything. I know she's been doing she's been working like the first responder war room stuff during this whole hurricane and everything. So but she's doing okay. Hope everyone else in Florida is doing okay during is it Hurricane Helen or Helene? Is it's Helene, right? Uh yeah, Helene. Helene, yeah. So hopefully everyone's doing well over there. I don't know what the status of it is today, but I know over the last couple of days it's been pretty it was brutal rough. yesterday. So, it was really yeah. bad. So she's good. Hope everyone else is too. Hope everyone else stays safe. So um but uh, we we met in the city and we were talking. And now we kind of we kind of built a friendship outside the city. Where now we chat, you know, here and there and everything. And uh, she's a cool person, awesome person. Um, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, waiting to get in. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. So I was telling her, and I, I asked her, and everyone in the city is amazing. This is me just being conspiracy theorist. Don't believe, you know, no proof of it, but. I don't know how many people could truly be in a city at once. I don't know the size of servers that allow how many people to be in at a certain time. Because when I first started in the city, the cap was 250 people. And I know before that, I think it was like 200. They were able to increase it up to 300. But obviously, with 60, 70, 80 people still in the queue, still not enough room. So in my mind, I'm like, I wonder if there's a way to get 400 people in the server at once. Now, obviously, more people means it needs to be a bigger server, you know, you know whatever, mm-hmm. however the price works. Need, there needs to be more in order to, to run smoothly. I understand that. My question is, is that they sell VIP tiers. VIP 1, VIP 2, VIP 3. It's like 10, 20, 40, or 10, 30, 40, or 10, 25, 40, whatever it is. Sure. And depending on the tier you buy is what gives you uh, priority inside the queue. So a guy like me who's not I'm not a VIP member at all because I'm trying to, for the first time in my life, I'm trying not to put money into a game I'm playing. Yeah. You know, because then, you know, which with this, other than VIP tiers, there's nothing else that's really money, you know, written, you know, you don't, you don't put any money into it unless you do the monthly VIP tiers. Um, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to just, I want to be able just to play the game. It's like, hey, it's free, you know. Yes, I bought the game. And yes, I bought this computer to play it, but that's it. I'll see you right. edit. But um, but yeah, so that's about it. I don't want to do the monthly thing. So for me, when I get into the tier, like I am just basically like the last person to get in compared to the VIPs. So if I jump in, there's 30 people in there. I'm I'm 31 of 31. And anyone who jumps in at my level is now behind me. Now anyone who jumps in. VIP one will go to the front of the line of the non VIP people. So now I'll become 31, uh, 30, 31 of 32. Nah, fucking, anyways, oh, so if I'm 31 of 31 and somebody else jumps in, now I'm 32 of 32 if they're VIP one. And mm, if as I go, if I go down and non VIP people come up, if I'm like, if I'm 15 of 28, a VIP guy jumps in. I'm now 16 of 29. So it's kind of shutting gotcha. So I never lose my spot to the other non-VIPs, but I will to VIP ones. But they lose their spot to VIP two, and then two will lose it to three. Gotcha. So it's just how it just how it works. And I guess somebody found a loophole to where if you buy all three of them, it puts you like at the front no matter what and goofy shit. The one thing I can respect about this uh, city, I'm sure other cities are kind of like this. Uh, the owner doesn't give himself priority over anyone else. He he orders the tier system, and he's part of it too. And he 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 will wait just like everyone else. He'll fly in just like everyone else. And I think that's pretty cool. I can respect that. Um, 
I'm not a huge fan of him ignoring my Instagram messages, but that's fine. Different story. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Oh, my Sophie did it for a while, too, and we rectified that, so we're good. Anyways, I have this weird conspiracy thought that maybe the reason they're not opening it up to 400 people is because they want to sell those VIPs. Mm, I could see that. Like, it's a possibility. I'm not saying they're doing it because there's nothing. There's nothing about this about this uh, server that says that they're greedy like that. None right. whatsoever. Because this dude, fucking uh, Tony Messer, who he owns the server and everything, is probably one of the coolest fucking people, like I've like ever like watched or streamed about or anything like that. Um, he. He's a he's a former K9 officer who started streaming and doing gaming and all that stuff for purely for the what the hell? what words are looking for? He was he was doing it to raise money for like uh for like ice cream for children or bikes mm. for children and stuff like that. Charity. Yeah, yeah, fundraising, charity, yes, exactly. So he um I want to say it was like a month ago or maybe a month and a half ago. Like he he does these uh, ice cream events like every year, and he, he like so like he'll do a stream on Twitch where people will raise money for the ice cream event or they'll raise money for uh for buying kids bicycles around Christmas time and uh, a couple of the other streamers who work in the service are doing things too. Uh, this one guy I want to say Slivers. I want to say his name Slivers. Um. He did a fundraiser to make uh, gaming carts for children in hospitals. And it's just basically like, you know, like, you know, like they have like those carts for like the like the EKG machines and shit. Where, like we rolled around in the hospitals. That just like a tall, like, like a bunch of like, you know, technical crap on like a, a on a cart. They roll around and they do like the ultrasounds and all that shit. For sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's he 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 made a uh, fundraiser. Basically for carts like that, but they're like Xboxes and like TVs. So you can wheel these carts into rooms that children are, you know, they have cancer or, you know, you know, they're going through any types of like illnesses where they have to be in the hospital. You can wheel the cart right next to their bed. You can plug it into the wall and they can play Xbox or PlayStation or whatever video game it is and stuff. And they got their own personal TV, their own gaming system and all that stuff. And they were raising money. He was raising money, I think, to do like. I don't know, like six, like a, like a, just a just a just a small number of them, and I think he ended up doing like thirty, because of the wow. people because of the people that are involved, and 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 just and just watching streamers play a video game, like you're able to do that, like like when Messer did the bike raffle, I don't and I don't know these numbers off the top of my head, so you can correct me all you want if you hear this and you know the numbers and stuff. I just. There is just the it's the difference in what it was is what's phenomenal to me because when he did the bike raffle, I think his goal was like five grand. I think he ended up with like sixty. So he's able to obviously buy a lot more bicycles and stuff like that. And it, it's it's just a cool thing. And I, I know his whole his whole reason for doing all this is obviously doing, you know, for the community, he you know, for his own personal community, but now it's become this community of, you know followers and subscribers and stuff but he also wanted to like bridge that gap between first responders and civilians or non-first responder people to show that you know like obviously like with the the george floyd stuff and everything that happens like not everyone's like that not every law enforcement officer is a bad person you know there's there's actually good people out there who wants to do good things in life um and that's one of the big reasons why i, I like i got so wanting to play this game is like because that's a cool fucking dude and what him and his friends doing these fundraisers and all this you know the fact that like you know in my mind is like children who and, and it's heartbreaking you know to think about is like he's like like he he has this trailer of all these small children's bikes that are being hauled to this area that he's gonna be handing it out it's like it's like the fact that like like he's changing like 50 60 kids lives because they couldn't have something as simple as a fucking bike, like mm -hmm. that's like that's cool. So, um, <clears throat> nice. yeah. So, do I believe that they're changing the server numbers? You know, not expanding it because of the VIP pays. It's very possible. I'm not saying it is though, but it's just like uh, it's just me thinking of like, ah, eh, maybe. 
So who knows? Um, but yeah. they are cool fucking dudes. And one day I do believe that uh, Tony Musser will uh, will see my many Instagram DMs and will respond. And then we get him on the show. And uh, nice. then I will uh, throw that into his face for a minute to hopefully break the ice. And then we have a conversation with uh, with a dude who is younger than us, but apparently more popular than us. And that's also <laughs> something I, uh, I'm not happy about. But, I mean, there's like a five-year-old on YouTube who's making millions playing with toys or something like that. I don't get I, yeah. I don't understand social media and how people get famous and don't get famous, you know. But Me either. Yeah, I don't know. That was a... Uh, that was a lot in 20 minutes. Feels like forever. Um, anyways, thank you, Kelly, for my haircut. And uh, thank you, Tony Messer, for entertaining me for almost two years now that I've been watching him. And uh, it's cool, too, because I can watch him for free because, you know, if you have uh, Amazon Prime, you get subscribed to someone on uh, Twitch for free. So. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Forgot. Yeah, just one person, though. Yeah, I think we're, if we aren't, we used to be uh, subscribed to Critical Role on Twitch. Who is, why does the name sound familiar? Uh, I don't know. I don't know why you would know him, but um, uh, it's one of Maddie's favorite shows that she she loves them. Um, but they're that uh, Dungeons and Dragons role-playing group made up of all voice actors. That's because you talked about it. Did I talk about it? You did. You know, you were talking about how you were watching. If it's the same show, but like I remember. Oh like, yeah, they made one, an animated version. I love one, that. One of yeah. your freaking thinking. You said like you sat down and watched it with her, and it was good. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I think she was in the room, like just like laughing, like really loud. Unless I'm thinking right. of a different episode, but that might be it. I don't know. I just remember hearing Critical Role, and I, I think I did what I did normally when you bring up people I've never heard of before. Like let's get them on the show. <laughs> but they might be I think they might be a little bit too high for us. They might be too high for us. Might, they might be too high for us. Yeah. Yeah. But Joe, how you doing? You good? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Just uh, you know, tired. Yeah. Life. Life well, is life. Hope you're getting excited, man, because the next episode that comes out uh for us is going to be the first this freaky show of twenty twenty four. Can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's always it's always this time of year where I'm just like I'm really excited for everything we're doing. Like I feel mm-hmm. like everything we do builds up to like this month. It's like you know, it's it, because I think, I, I, and obviously you know a lot of it has to do with the vlogs, you know, because of the work we put in for those and everything, and the fact that we can put a show out like this where we have no idea what the hell we're gonna talk about. Like the only thing I came up with talking about today was the fact that Schwanz is going out of business and we haven't even gotten to that point yet. Schwanz is going out of business? Schwanz is going out of business. I think I I think wow. I, I saw an article that says Schwanz or I think it's called Yella now, like L Y E L L A H or something like that now. Uh I think is closing up shop uh, in November. Wild. So, yeah, which uh, which was upsetting, and uh, it was uh, somebody put together this weird uh, little video. Yellow. Yeah, somebody put together this weird little video of uh, if they were to use the song "Time of Your Life," it would fit perfectly with it. I don't remember what song they did use. It was on uh, Instagram, believe it or not. And uh, they're just showing like all the, like the different things, like the, the little cuts of ice cream with the wooden spoons, and uh, oh, I love those. Yeah, like chicken fingers and it. And honestly, like, as much as I'm like, wow, that really sucks. I I forgot there were even a thing because, I mean, living at home, I remember early 2000s and shit, like, the Schwann truck would just be driving down the road. Like, I just assumed it was like, just like a, uh, a more extravagant ice cream truck. Yeah, like I mean, it kind of is. Right? Like, mom should just run out there and be like, oh, give me a bag of chicken fingers and some ice cream pops, you know? It's oh, like, see, that'd be smart. They'd realize that. Maybe that's what, you know, if they did that, they probably wouldn't go out of business. Yep, yep. Like, oh, shit, what am I going to make for dinner? And then all of a sudden, just a, just some chimey music starts playing. Mm-hmm. And they're like, shit, Schwanz. They start running out, you know, with their husband's money, not being sexist, just, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, uh, but it's, it's the vibe of the company. It's, it's very yeah. 1950s housewife. What we're trying to do to help the women, yeah, right, right? The convenience for the, for, the, for the mom at home, the wife at home and stuff. I just mm-hmm. wanted to use it as a reference of like a child right now with their parents' money, but right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, like them running out, I was like, oh my god, like let me, uh, let me get some uh, frozen uh, uh, gnocchi and uh, and uh, some garlic bread or some shit like that. You know, I was like, I was like yeah, here you go, and take the money. And I was like, 
Yeah. You know, that's probably a better business model. So, Schwanz, take the next, uh, I don't know, four weeks and turn it around. <clears throat> Adult ice cream trucks. Well, food trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, no, they're uh, they're closing down. And then yeah, because at first I was like, "What the fuck is yellow?" And then it says Schwanz underneath. I'm like, "Oh wow, I didn't even know they're in business." But said they're going out of business. Oh, dang. Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting that we could go from shows like this where it's like, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna talk about. We're just gonna ramble, and some funny, entertaining shit's gonna come out of it. To okay, this is what I have planned for the next six episodes. Um, yeah, that is nice. Yeah, so because I mean, other than this freaky show, we have like what, like the Oscar episodes we kind of planned a little bit for, but yeah, we, I, the yeah, the goal of having a uh, having a, a guest once every month clearly died in like right. twenty twenty one. Um, but we need to bring people back. Somebody needs to come on this show. <clears throat> Plus, I did have I did have Apex or Matt Stoffel on a couple months ago. Nice. I did do that. Yeah, we're gonna get more people on here. I want to bring our cousin on because I want her to uh, to to therapize me. Mm, mm-hmm. I want I want her to I want her to find out what's wrong with me. So, don't we have two therapists in the family? Or psychologists or what are they called? I don't know. I don't. <clears throat> if we do. Which I think it may be only just be one. But if we did, yeah. or if I know two psychologists or whatever they're called, I, w- I want to get them both on the show, and I want them to just listen to me for like half an hour. I want to see if they come up with the same conclusion or what their perspective of. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, because I want one to be like, you just sound like a really nice guy. And then the other one would be like, you're a psychopath. <laughs> Just be like, let's talk to the first one. Like, let's let's let's, let's yeah. go back to this nice guy thing. Like, what is it about? Like, yeah, like, we'll say the psychopath for scary show. Freaky that's show. right. That's this freaky show. Yeah, October twenty twenty five. Yeah, we'll we'll release that part of it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. well, yeah, because well, that was that was the one thing we had an idea at at the um, last family wedding we were at together was we're just gonna go up to we're just gonna have every family member who has a unique job and just come on the show and talk about it. You know? Yeah. We do have a lot of a lot of unique unique jobs in the family. Well, let's see, uh, I mean, even if you look at it, like, I mean, GCR is a farmer, you know, part time farmer. Part of the year, farming. yeah. Uh, Paul raised dogs at one point in his life. I mean, that mm-hmm. means you talk about breeding and everything. Uh, oh, Carl owned a mechanic shop. You know, talk about you know owning his own business. I'm yep. sure we talk about interstate battery for a year and a half with everyone who's involved. In oh yeah, if we battery. just had only them on easily, right? Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Um, well, Joe, you're a pastor. I mean, there's mm-hmm. unique. Uh, Michael works in a in an uh, uh, automobile plant. Uh, mm-hmm. Plant. What the fuck? Yep, and he's Auto- done almost everything in there. Yeah, so it's like, you know, find out like is is the car industry really struggling? It's like, eh, you know, um, what was it? Uh, farmers, uh, Josh. Um, yeah, well, and you got you got like industrial farmers uh, with what GCR does, and then you got like uh, individual, like uh, independent farmers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Insurance, uh, maybe. Oh, we can because one is, we have one cousin sells insurance, right? Yeah, Josh. Yeah, maybe he could talk about why my insurance costs so fucking much. <clears throat> Terrorists. <They're not> terrorist, <laughs> they kind of are. I just hate uh, like, not him like, or necessarily not his no, company, just he but. just the insurance as a whole. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, hey, you want to survive? Cool. I'm gonna take every dollar you have in order to survive. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you want to be healthier? Cool. I'll cover this, but not this. It's like, why don't you just cover all of it? I had that conversation with Kelly yesterday when I was getting my haircut because we were talking about how uh, I started taking like these uh, these dietary supplements, these uh, these uh, this medication to help curb my appetite. And oh, big shocker, they don't work. Um, and not for the sense of like, you know, like I'm getting fatter being on them. It's just the whole idea of them is to curb my appetite and to prevent me from wanting to be hungry. But that's not my problem. My problem is losing weight. It's not, it's not, I don't, it's not like I'm constantly hungry throughout the day. It's like, oh good, I'm eating because I'm fucking starving. It's like, I barely fucking eat and I just don't lose weight. So, Mm -hmm. but we were talking about how like, things like that aren't really covered by insurance. Like, you know, like, like insurances don't cover 
you know, you know, you know, um, like surgeries and medicine for obesity, which yeah. is which is fucking wild because, like Kelly said, like obesity can lead to heart disease and this and the diabetes and that and the other thing that would cost health hospital you know or insurances mm-hmm. more and shit. And she's right. And it's like I was telling her my belief about it was. It doesn't matter if it's health insurance, if it's car insurance, if it's homeowner's insurance, whatever the hell it is. If it's preventable, they won't insure it. And in their eyes, obesity is preventable. Right. You can stop yourself from being fat. Just like, you know, if you get in a car accident, if it's your fault, you're probably not going to be covered unless you pay more for full coverage. Should like that. You know, you set fire in your own house because of, of you know, you know, negligence. ignorant negligence. You sound clutch. Oh, that's why I love talking to you, Joe. Um, <clears throat> you're probably not gonna get paid out because it was your fault. Right. That's that's why that's why you, you never hear the word accident in car insurance anymore, because technically accidents don't exist. They're incidents. Mm. There's, a, there's a car incident because interesting shift of language. Yeah. Yeah. Because because they inc- pay out for accidents, but they don't pay out for incidents. Yeah. Because an incident sure. can be avoided. And that's what it is. Like it's like, well, if you weren't driving at such a high rate of speed, you wouldn't have hit that patch of ice and would have, you know, wrapped around that pole. Or or if you were more observant, you wouldn't have ran into that deer. You know? Mm-hmm. That's why it's the whole thing, like, you know, growing up, especially in Piaton, they tell you the same concept. If you ever have to file a claim because of a deer incident, the deer hit you. You did not hit that deer. Right. The deer hit you. Which was a perfect example for my mom because a deer truly did hit her, ran mm-hmm. out, and literally slammed right into her car door. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. And the insurance wanted to claim that, like, well, she technically hit the deer. And my mom said, I was like, how did I hit the deer with my door? Right. Explain that. Like, so it's, it was wild, but yeah, that. Show me how my car drives sideways to do that. Right, yeah. So he's like, I'm not all here Tokyo drifting my fucking vehicle. It's like, oh shit, you know. But that's what insurance companies are, you know. And I feel bad for like the agents who have to follow those policies. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like right now, it's like, dude, it's like when I was driving my my uh, my my pickup truck, I was paying like ninety eight dollars a month for my insurance. Woof. And now I got. I guess that's probably uh, not that much different from what we're paying for insurance. It, it wasn't horrible, but now I got my Chevy Malibu, and now I'm paying 166. And Jeez. yeah, and I called uh, I called a buddy of mine through the wrestling that uh, company that I work with. He, he's a uh, he's a insurance agent and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, dude, if I give you my information, could you find me better insurance? And he's like, yeah, send me over. Let's see what we can find out. And he couldn't. He said all the insurance out there would be exactly the same for me. And it's like, why? He's like, well, it's, it's new. It's a car. You're a guy. You know? Yeah, but you're over 25. For goodness sakes. Yeah. Apparently, that's what the insurance rates are now. And mm-hmm. which is wild because when I first got my car, my insurance was 125 and somehow it went up to 166. And I talked to another friend of mine, Kelly, again, who was doing my hair because, you know, when you're in a salon, you get a little chatty. Oh yeah, um, That's one of the best parts, really. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she found out through a friend of hers that State Farm is inflating their costs because they need to make up for some money that you know was fucking being out or whatever. Yeah. I, think, I think it was COVID related. I don't fucking know, but gotcha. It's some just of like, it's probably my fault because I think that uh, that guy that uh, um, guy. that that we we hit bicycles. Mm-hmm. Um, he sued my homeowner's insurance and I'm pretty sure there's like a, a personal injury section of my homeowner's insurance that is like a hundred grand. So I don't know how much he walked away with cause I wasn't part of any of that. I just got the notification that it was over, but I know my, my rates went up after it. They don't tell you how much is paid out. I'm, I it, might be able to ask, but yeah, no, that they would, didn't. That would, that would drive me wild not knowing. Yeah, honestly, it took so long that I was just so relieved it was over that I didn't care. Yeah. I was just like, I don't even want to know about it anymore. I'm so over yeah. it. <laughs> right, put out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, but it took like the, three years, for goodness and sakes. The, and the thing about and the thing about those uh, situations, too, is 
when you when you watch TV, especially like crime shows, so much, you know, you start looking at shit like like your situation, like. Was it avoidable on his end, or did he intentionally cost something because, you know, there's a payout for it? Now, we've talked right. about it. We're not going back into detail on, on, uh, on the situation and everything, but we, we, know, we know there are several faults. But, I mean, like, people who, like, inadvertently walk in front of traffic to mm-hmm. be hit by a car and shit, and it's, it's just it's wild that people are out there doing that stuff. And it's like, how do insurance companies, and maybe that's why it took the three years, like, are verifying that these incidences are truly accidents and not intentional ways to get some money. Right. You know, yeah. You know, I'm not. That's not, I'm not saying that that's what this guy did, but it's like, how do you know that shit? You know, it's like, yeah. how does he know that? Like, he's. Like, I'm. I'm certain that so Maddie was in an, an incident mm-hmm. uh, five or six years ago, and uh, they both. Uh, it was. It was like. You know, like near sunset and the light was in her eyes and she didn't see the car in front of her stop. And uh, and we don't know. We legitimately don't know if he just stopped suddenly and she didn't catch it right away or if the sun was in her eyes and she hit him, you know. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. In Illinois, it's b- both parties are at fault. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless, they went together to file their police report so that, you know, uh, everybody is on the same page and stuff for their insurance purposes. Yeah. And, um, like, you know, when, when he went in and, and did his report, everything was fine. And about two weeks later, we got a notice in the mail from one of those, uh, personal injury attorneys that you see the billboards for. Yeah. And, uh, the claim was that he, uh, he got whiplash and needed uh, medical treatment for his neck to treat his whiplash. Dude. And what kind of puss, and I'm sorry for using that word isn't going to openly talk about that in person and wait till he's away from the person he's involved in the incident with to start making up shit. Mm-hmm. Like, 100%. I, I get that there's like some residual shit that may come up, like, you know, like maybe lower back pain and something like that. Right. I'm no doctor, but whiplash is going to be something that's going to be instantly noticed. Right away. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, but the fact that he's like, you know, and I hate people because that proves that they're fucking fake people. It's like it's like I'm gonna be hey you know hey mistakes happen we're cool blah, blah, you know we'll figure this all out you know you know accidents happen we're good and everything and then all of a sudden you know, let's go fucking sue somebody it's like oh mm-hmm. my neck is killing me it's like you motherfucker it's like yeah I, and like that's that's sorry. almost like the function of 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 auto insurance at this mm-hmm. point is mm-hmm. it's not really to protect you as an individual necessarily I mean it is but it's also it's a way for people who make money suing people to make that money yeah. You know, and and the insurance company figures most people aren't going to do that, so we can we can charge more for the people, so that the people who do do that we don't care, <laughs> uh, and we can pocket the difference. Yeah, you know, yeah, dude, in, insurance, insurance, and I I have a firm belief too that a lot of these fucking insurance companies are like, we know people are going to get in accidents, that's why we can raise the rates, right. It's like, it's like, I, because here's the thing too, is like, I've, I've had insurance now, and majority of the time it was with State Farm, but I've had insurance since I owned a car 16 years old. So yeah. I've been insured now for 19 years, you know, 19 and a half years, never once, other than my windshield, which I just had to do, but, oh, actually, I got to see if my check's in the mail. I just had, I just had to replace that windshield. Oh yeah, nice, um, nice. Yeah, yeah, $100 deductible. It was perfect. Uh. They, I called, I called uh, State Farm, and it's I, I love State Farm, but they fucking they're, they're too pricey. Um, but I love State Farm because I called the lady up and said, "Listen, I had a crack in my windshield. I need to get it fixed. I know it's covered by my insurance. I just don't know what my deductible is." And she's like, "Okay, well it's a hundred dollars." And I'm like, "Okay, cool, awesome. Uh, so what do I need to do here? Like because the last time I did this is, uh, you guys scheduled an appointment. I cut you a check for fifty dollars. I went and did the appointment. She's like, "Well, uh, that may have been the process then, but the process is now is." Schedule the appointment, get a quote. Tell us what the quote is. We will send you that amount less $100. So I was like, cool. So I looked up Safe Flight. I scheduled an appointment for them to do it while I'm at work. You know, got everything through and everything. Sent her the invoice. And she said, awesome. We'll have a check available for you for this amount, less $100. You can either pick it up or we can mail it to you. <clears throat> well, I couldn't pick it up because by the time I got off work and got there, it'll be closed. 
So they mailed it. So I got to see if it's in the mail because I didn't see it yet. Nice. But it, it could be that. I check my mail like once a week. I'm horrible with fucking mailboxes. Um, but other than two windshields, I never really had a claim on my auto insurance. Mm-hmm. Which is actually wild because actually when I filed for my homeowner's insurance for my for uh, the hail damage, I don't think my rate went up. I don't think my premium or my my nice. uh, my rate went up. So blessing on that. Thanks, God. Um, but obviously my car insurance didn't go up either. But if I was to get in an accident right now, I, the 19 years of insurance is not even looked at when they're about to jack my rate up probably twice what I'm paying now because that's when I say, hey, listen, you know, we had to because there was this pay on those this, that. Like, I don't know how much they really increase it, but mm-hmm. it's ridiculous that they like they have to increase it at all. Like the whole point of having insurance is to be insured that things will be covered. Right. But it's like now basically like you're and taking 90% my- of the time I'm not I, I'm not making a claim. Yeah. You know, you're making money hand over fist three, four years in a row. And then I've got one claim where you've got to pay out. Yeah. And then you punish me for it. And it's like, just bullshit. Yeah, I heard, I don't know if it's true. I never really looked into it. It'd be wild if it was true. But, uh, like, people are taking money out of their life insurance. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. think that, that can't be real. I'm not sure if it is. I think maybe if you're very, very rich, it's possible. Yeah. But I feel like regular people, like, no way. No, because I I mean, it's... Or if you're very old and you're near the end of your, I think it's like usually term, or whole life insurance, they call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. if you're if you're nearing the end of your life, uh, there's no reason not to, but... Yeah, yeah, I just, I mean, like, obviously, you know, it, it's stuff I see on the internet, so I take it, you know, at face value for what it is. It's just somebody talking, mm-hmm. but it's like, dude, if... If I was able to get, you know, go to my life insurance company and say, hey, listen, I want to take out $80,000 because I want to put it towards my mortgage or some shit like that. It's just mm-hmm. like, like, I, I think if it was real, you'd hear about it a lot more often. A lot more people would be doing it. Mm-hmm. But then also probably the, you know, life insurance companies would probably be broke because people probably start doing that shit. It's like, oh, I have a $100,000 policy. Cool. Give me that now. Yeah. Like, I'll continue to pay until I die, and then when I die, I'll have absolutely nothing, but I need it now. You know, it's... Yeah. It's, well, they take it out as a loan. I think it's taken out as a loan against your policy mm-hmm. or something. And uh, so when the when you die or whatever, the policy, instead of paying to your family, pays to itself. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, money. defeats the purpose of life insurance. Yeah. To some extent. Yeah. I just want money. That's that's all I want, dude. This is, like, just... Yeah. Like, I, I just, just want to like, not have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Right? It's Like, I, I think I'm blessed. Now, like I said, after that refi thing, I've been blessed now to where I'm not worrying about money. Now, the big concern right now is, obviously, is like, I had I had this chunk of, of, uh, of money left over from you know buying the buying the appliances paying off the credit card like there, there was a chunk left mm-hmm. and that's that's slowly deteriorating because i am kind of you know you know spending spending yeah spending on things i don't really need but it, it's like it's a small little trickle i do got bill I, I know i know i need to open a savings account and i know i need to get that money into there get it out of my checking account so i stop using it um but I know because, like, the way everything's mapped out now that I should be saving enough money monthly now to where it will kind of catch it, it will instantly catch up. It, um, I think it's November. We get th- I think November's a three-check uh, month. Nice. So there's an extra check that's kind of like it, it's free money. It Before to me, it was always free money, found money, whatever. But I could easily take that, combine it with what I have to put into savings, and it'll just balance itself out again. So Nice. Um, so yeah, so that's, I got to get that done soon. And I think I'm actually off this coming Friday. I'll probably just go into the bank and actually find a little bit of that savings account. But, um, yeah, I just, I just, I just want to be able to like, stop worrying about fucking money. It's stupid that like, I'm, I'm sitting here now, like my car finally hit, my car hit a hundred thousand miles and I've only had the car for a year and a half. You know, I bought it with 60, but I already put a hundred thousand miles wow. on it. And I was pissed because I was at a stoplight heading home from work. Wednesday or Thursday this week, 
light turns green, I go to accelerate, and my car doesn't fucking move. Ugh. I'm saying, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, and I, I'm, like, flooring the gas to fucking move. And it felt like I was just – it felt like I was pushing on the brake. Like, am I pressing the wrong fucking pedal? Like, am right. I – in my 19 years of driving, am I not remembering how to fucking drive? Like, no, I'm pushing the gas. I'm excited, and it's not fucking moving. And I was like, and there's cars behind me honking because it's a it's a short light, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Then eventually yeah. it starts to kind of accelerate, and then it starts to accelerate. So I finally get to make the turn. I have to pull into a strip mall and shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like it's like a Walmart that shut down, which I don't know how fucking Walmart shut down, but this one did. And I'm driving around the fucking parking lot like I'm a brand new driver just accelerating and braking, turning and accelerating to try to figure out if my car is going to be fucking normal. And eventually it kicked into being normal, but it's just like, I don't know what the fuck happened. But the problem is now is I'm, I'm past my warranty. So uh, like, of course. Yeah, so it's like, okay, well, clearly now if I bring it in, it's going to have to be, oh, well, here's what's wrong with it, you know, and we could definitely look at it, but, you yeah. know, it's going to be six about- grand. Yeah, so it's yeah. so looking at well, maybe maybe I could afford to get a brand new car. Brand new fucking four cylinder sedans like I own are in the fucking mid 20, 20 grand. Mm-hmm. It's like these cars used to be sixteen thousand yep. dollars, like new, yep. ready to go, sixteen to eighteen fucking grand. Now you're telling me that you tacked on ten thousand additional dollars. For a four cylinder, something that's one step up above a fucking riding lawnmower and a moped. Mm-hmm. It's like I like I had I had a dealership call me the other day saying, like, oh hey, we haven't uh, heard from you in a while. And I was like, Yeah, like 10 years. Like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, like, oh wow, we oh, we haven't called you in 10 years. I'm like, yeah, I bought my truck 10 years ago. And like, I, I, yeah, I haven't heard from you guys since. I'm like, oh well, you know, we're sorry about that. I'm like, don't care, wasn't looking. Um, but it, yeah, but I, I was fine for ten years. I didn't yeah. need one. <laughs> so uh, like, well, we're not sure if you still have the truck. I'm sure you, you know, you got rid of it by now. I'm like, yeah, the engine blew last year. It's like, wow, okay, wow, okay. Well, we got some other vehicles on the line if you want to look at it. And I'm like, are they used? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't want to buy another used vehicle. I, I'm driving around a used vehicle right now. And there's the thing: if I was to bring this into trade, you're probably not going to give me anything for it. You know, and I don't want to fucking. And that's a weird thing I was fucking thinking about too. Is like, if this car was to break down, if it was to fucking die, I'm driving, engine blows, fucking gone. Am I gonna put a nine thousand dollar fucking engine into a fifteen thousand dollar car in hopes that it will run until the transmission fucking dies on it? Because the alternative is is getting a new vehicle, and now I got two car payments because the insurance ain't gonna pay for a broken down fucking car. Right. At least as far as I know, I can't can't call the insurance and say, "Oh, hey, car died." Yeah. What uh, What do I do with this additional eighteen grand that I still owe? Oh, I still got to pay that. Cool. Mm-hmm. Thanks, world. Yeah. Well, depending on your policy, but I'm sure you just have like limited liability or whatever. Wait, huh? What? Depending on your policy, there are some policies that will pay off your current loan, uh, and then. Um, help you with with replacing hmm. i'd have to look into that yeah I know, they cost I know, a lot more i have to look i mean uh, it's called limited liability no limited liability is usually what people oh. have it's, it's the minimum amount you can put on your car for insurance i'd have to look i got i mean i i don't know honestly i have no idea what i have for my insurance. I actually think it's just liability limited liability is the um it's like an llc uh, Limited liability company. Well, I know li- I know. Well, for my from what I know is like liability insurance covers the other person if you cause the accident. Right. Full coverage covers everybody. Right. Um, that's all I know as far as insurance. Um, I know I have full coverage. I just don't know if if my car was to break down the side of the road, is if now I'm on the hook for eighteen thousand dollars for right. this fucking car and. It pisses me off that this fucking car is shit. I hate the fact that that last winter it was having problems and I brought it to the fucking dealership I bought it from and them telling me, it's like, oh yeah, we know what the problem is. It's happening a lot in these vehicles. They should make a, a recall for it, but they won't because it's an act of God. So we could fix it, but it's going to cost six grand. Mm-hmm. 
It's like, but my 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 I got I got I got my warranty still. It's, it's, it's like this doesn't this isn't on a warranty because it's an act of God. God is causing the problem. Right. Not blaming you. That's what the guy said. The insurance agency is blaming you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because because the because the weather is causing this issue, warranty won't cover it because it's not their manufacturing, it's the weather causing it. So it's not a it's not an issue with their equipment, it's the weather making the equipment not work, which is wild because they can replace it with a piece uh, with a part that won't be affected by winter. Yep. That's like uh, uh, on my model of Subaru, the, um, I forget what they're called, but there there's like a particular gasket or seal mm -hmm. that eventually wears out it, and it consistently wears out at a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. And what happens is, is once that wears out, you start to leak oil just a little bit. It's not enough to really, you know, mess up your life uh typically you can just top it off every thousand miles or so and then you're you're fine because in in between oil changes it's not really worth dealing with they made a warranty for that like a, a recall warranty yeah but it was only applicable for the first 10 years of the car's life under a hundred thousand miles so it, they would only fix it if the problem happened before the problem started to happen See, and, and that's stuff that's, first off, dumb because they know it happens at 100,000 on, but right. they do it under 100,000. But here's the thing, too. How do you know that's the problem when it comes to just an oil leak? You see oil on the ground, you take it in, it's either going to be, right. hey, maybe this is the recall. But then you find, like, oh, it's not that. It's actually a different gasket, yeah. a different line. Well, for me, I never saw, I, I have never seen any oil under my car, yeah. but I have started to have to top off my oil. In between gotcha. oil changes. Gotcha. Car companies are shit. Yep. Shit. Um, Joe, nice. I got one more question. I got one more question for you, and then we're going to do what we're freaking thinking about, and then we're going to close out the show. Uh, throughout the uh, throughout the next month, obviously, we're doing this freaky show. Uh, we're going to talk about all things Halloween. We're going to talk about uh, you know all things spooky, ghost, everything. You know, I'm excited for this. Uh, the one thing that's going to happen. Uh, while we're doing this is uh, debates. Uh, I think next week, actually, uh, Walls and uh, Vance are going to have their debate. Yep, I believe so, on Tuesday. Yeah, so so by the time we're done with this freaky show, the election is going to be happening. So uh, this may be our last kind of time to talk about elections and stuff because I don't want to do it during this freaky show. I want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want. I don't want Freak Joe's opinion on politics. Um, I assume it's aggressive and probably has to do with maybe Freddy Krueger in some aspect. <laughs> um, but um, what are your expectations? <laughs> What's your expectations and hopes coming out of the vice president debate? And what would be your expectations and hopes if uh, Kamala and Trump do a second debate? Yeah, I guess um, I hope that it's entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really I think at this point. Um, well, but unbelievably, that last debate changed a few people's minds. I don't understand how people don't have their minds made up already. Yeah. I just don't. I don't understand. I don't understand the concept of an undecided voter. I think that's baffling. Mm -hmm. um, I think if the decision is between voting at all and not voting, that yeah. I could understand because, like, there's a lot of problems with both both political parties and both candidates mm -hmm. and yeah. and whatever. It It'd be one thing to be undecided right now if it was two unknown brand new candidates. Yeah. But from from the perspective of what I've seen, other than maybe some slight mind changes, yeah, their policies aren't different. We, we've seen really. we, we've yeah. seen what we've seen what Harris is willing to back over her vice presidency over the last nearly four years, and we know what Trump's uh, backing over his president term, you know, with his four years. It's like other other than what I think. Uh, I mean, obviously Kamala's change on uh, her her change on fracking is the only thing I know of that's you know a change that people are making you know a big deal. Yeah. Uh, but people's opinions always change and stuff. But by this time, these two candidates who are going in, like you've seen what they are about over the or even like with Harris, like like her running for candidacy in 2016, 
So he right. had eight years of her. Trump running for eight years. You, I mean, you have an idea. Like, right, like exactly. The, the people who are indecisive between the two, like, I, I don't know what they're really looking for. Right. Yeah, I have no idea. I yeah. can't figure it out. And I I just, I find it baffling. Yeah. Um, so that being said, like, I guess if there are people who can change their minds mm -hmm. still, I, you know, I hope their minds are changed. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I hope personally, I just, as, just as individuals, I like walls as a person better than I like Vance as a person. Yeah. And I really hope that walls just completely crushes that little bug of a man. Uh, I think that would be very fun and entertaining for me personally. I think uh, I think about. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I I I don't know what my next thought was. Oh, I was gonna say like I, I think the biggest benefit for Harris when it comes to Walls is Walls is more relatable to. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say a lower class, but less than middle class. Yeah, like, especially when he's it comes just a to, like, regular dude in so many yeah. ways, and it's great. That's yeah, think, my favorite thing about him. Yeah, I think the struggle with Vance is, and it's it's just an opinion. I'm not 100 percent confident on it either. Is that he wants to come off like that? But I think his higher education personality kind of prevents that sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But <laughs> that I, moment when he walked in the donut shop and, <laughs> and he, she's like, what do you want? And he's like, whatever makes sense. And it's like, well, it's 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 not <laughs> it's not a policy. It's not a war policy. Right. It's a donut, man. Right. Just pick a donut. It's have right. a have a favorite donut, you <laughs> person who's trying to be a person. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for the VP for the <laughs> VP debate. Because and I, I don't like the idea of the possibility of like racism or sexism to be a factor, but I know like when it comes to like Harris and Trump, if Trump says one wrong thing about her, it could come off as either like you know it's because she's black or Indian or it's because she's woman or something like that. It's gonna be two white dudes. Yeah, it's like it's like you, it's like there's there shouldn't be any type of factor of like oh well you know it's because of this because that's like it's gonna be two fucking yep. white dudes. The only difference is one's what? How old is Walls? Like late fifties? Is he sixty? And then Vance, I think, is like in his mid forties or some shit. That no, he's like thirty eight. He's young. Is he really? Okay, yeah. damn. That's wild. Let me double check. I mean, no. You oh no, he's forty. He just turned forty. Just turned forty. So the only difference is his age. But I mean. I love diversity. I love the idea that, you know, like, yeah, we do have a candidate who is, uh, she is half black, half Indian, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, half black, half Indian, but even fucking female, you know, like, you know, like give everyone a fucking chance. It's like that one, um, uh, that one dude who was running, uh, for a uh, Republican. Oh, Vivek. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like, I, I, I liked some of his ideas. I, I thought that was pretty cool, but it, it's the diversity of it all and everything. It shows that, you know, we, hey, we are multi -pod. Hey, we are, you know, we're collectively, yeah. we all have the same opportunities and shit. But to get two white dudes in there yelling at fucking each other and no one's worrying about like, hey, you know, you gotta watch, like, fucking, just, yeah, just say some shit. Especially, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know where Vance is at, but, you know, again, two, like, you know, good old boys kind of fucking just like, just going at it. Like, let's see what fucking happens. Like, yeah, uh, you know what? Yeah. If they start going at each other, just keep it going. Like, let's, it's like one of those things, like when you see a child about to put a fork into an outlet, it's like, well, hold on a second. Let's yeah. go. Let's, let's just go. Um, yeah. yeah. And it is, I, I have been looking forward to the vice presidential debate a lot mm -hmm. more simply because it's two, uh, it's two relative unknowns. Uh, exactly. Brand new people yet. Yeah. On the national stage. And, yeah. um, and yeah, I just think you've got, you've got a guy who's just a relatable, friendly guy. Mm -hmm. uh, versus I think JD Vance is like, a, 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 a an introverted academic, like, uh, elitist, you know? And I, I just think that's going to be, that's going to be fun. And it's interesting that it's like, it's on the other, the shoes on the other foot, right? Like for the last, uh, almost my whole life, right. The, the elitist, uh, academic snobs have been the Democrats oh, and, man. uh, the, the relatable friendly you know, uh, whatever has been the Republicans usually. Yeah. Bush Especially was a good, for the vice presidents. Bush was a good example of that. You know, he yeah. was, he was just a Texan guy. You know, he, he, he pandered to what the world needed at that point, you know? And yeah. And when I looked at Barack Obama, it's just, he seemed like, he seemed like more of like, you know, like an elegant kind of dude. Yeah. You know, he, just well, like, he was a like, constitutional law professor. Exactly. Like, you know, just well kept, you know, well, and uh, yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting. And then that's the thing is like when you look at the candidates now, Harris, you know, proper, 
I think, you know, ma- maintains composure well. And she got, you know, Walls, who is more of like, you know, a down home Midwest guy. And then on the mm-hmm. other end, you got Trump, who's, you know, more relatable as like, you know, just like, you know, like he's he 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 tries to be proper, but I mean he's definitely the dude who, you know, even in his fifties will go do shots at the bar with you. With right. Vance, who, you know, it's like he he went to one of the you know Ivy League colleges and everything. Like even though he tries to fit in, he's just kind of like like go hang out with your sweater vest, bro. So yeah. it's it's a unique collaboration of the two. And I think that's why I think either side at this point, like the 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 um the joining of different perspectives of their lives coming together is going to benefit a country. I just, and the, that's the hope anyways. Now, I don't know what the fuck the next four years are going to be with whoever's in. Right. Um, but I am excited because of, like I said, because the walls advance, I, I really want them to really fucking go at it. But my hope is, is they try to squeeze in two debates before the election. Cause I want the first one to be aggressive as fuck, but I want the next one to be really focused on, what their plans is, what what they want to do going forward. Like, give me both. But if yeah. uh, Harris and Trump were to do a second one, I would rather them do that as well. You know, tell me what you're going to do. Like, like I know they tried to do that a little bit in their debate, but eventually they just ended up attacking each other's character and stuff like that, which is fine. I get that you guys need the other to look bad so you can look better. And then, right. But try not to do that in the next debate. You know, focus yeah, and that's more my, on... Like, that's my biggest problem with debates in general, is that they are, they're a sideshow. They don't really tell you as much as they need to about the candidates. What they what they show is whether as how the candidate reacts under the pressure of a debate. Yeah, I love the, I love it. I love personal interviews instead. I love when yeah. they just sit down with the candidate and images like when uh, uh, Trump was on Fox News a few weeks ago, and actually uh, Harris I think just did one was it for MSNBC or ABC? Uh, like yeah, one or the so other. Go. Yeah, remember. yeah. But see, I, I prefer that because now they can kind of focus on what they want to do, not focus on the person who's standing 8, 10, 12 feet away from them at the next podium and shit. Because now yeah. the, the one thing that always bugged me, Trump did a lot, Biden did it, Harris, I mean, everyone fucking does it. Is So somebody will say, like, their final statement would be, here's some negative. And then they go on to the next question and say, what would you do about this? And like, before I answer this, I need to respond to what they said. It's like, you are taking up your entire time now. Respond to that, which it's it sucks that you have to do that because you need to defend your character. But it's mm-hmm. like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like he said it clearly. It's not true. Let's move on and answer the question. It's like, it's like we don't get that much. So like the important things like economy and immigration and um, and uh, healthcare and education all get, you know, backdoored or sidelined for I need to respond to this person saying I'm a criminal. It's right. just like yeah. So it's it, it's goofy. Yeah, I. I I love the baits when it comes down to like, yeah, it's, it's, I like the baits when there's, when you don't take it too seriously, because I know yeah. at the end of the day, and especially since 2016 on, I need to bait us all. Like I'm going in for an entertainment, a shock factor. Cause I know, mm-hmm. I know there's no way for two hours straight, they're going to focus only on talking about their policies. It's going to be like, I'm going to do this yeah. because this person's not willing to do it because this is their mindset. And it's just like, do whatever. Um, but yeah, exactly. That. Yeah. And so, I, I think, and, and so if there if there is another pre, uh, presidential debate, um, yeah, I hope it's more substantive. That would be great. I, I think it's highly unlikely, especially, um, you know, I think they're looking at October 23rd, which is like two weeks before the election. For a second um, presidential one? Or? For a second presidential oh. one. Uh, Harris has agreed to it. As far as I know, Trump has not. Um, so we'll see. But um, yeah, anyway, it, I don't know. With two weeks out, I think that um, I would want to say when, when you're two weeks out, I feel like anybody who cares about policy has their mind should have their mind made up. There shouldn't be yeah. anything that that is surprising two weeks out. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's all about vibes. And so I think the the next debate, you know, it might be it might be fun. It might be interesting, but I think it is just going to be a fight rather than an actual debate. And that's going to yeah. be a bummer. So yeah. the only the only I don't know if I even consider it a hope. I think it would be interesting if Trump decided not to go and then Harris just did a town hall for two hours. Mm-hmm. That's that's the only like that. That's the only to me really interesting for me personally possibility. Yeah, I, I said I, I think. Yeah, I think them just being talked to by themselves. It, it gives them. 
first off, could kind of let their guard down a little bit to allow them to speak freely and honestly about what they want to do. Like I said, mm-hmm. I, I love the baits for the entertainment value, but when it comes to actually learning about what I need to know, I'm not going to get that from there. Like nope. it'll it'll pop up here and there, yeah. Like, but there's always there's always a rise in aggression when it comes to these. Uh, so, yeah, as an entertainment thing, fucking on board. Hell, you know what? Put it on Netflix and just let them say whatever the fuck they want next year. I don't or next in four yeah. years. I don't care. Yeah, let, yeah. Who gives a shit? Let let them say what they want to say then. But no, I like you said, do the town halls, do the interviews, do your do your campaign uh, trail stuff. It, I'd rather see that because. You allows you to just speak yeah. and tell well, me what and, you want to do for change. You know? Yeah. And I think especially it's, it's, and I, I don't know, I don't know if there's a way out for Harris on this, but I feel like, um, she has pivoted already to rather than being the person she was in 2020 in 2020 or the Senator she was in 2016 or, mm-hmm. or anything like that. I feel like her Democratic consultants have forced her to pretend to be a generic Democrat. And so yeah. she never really talks about what her actually policy policies are. Uh, even, even in interviews, it seems very vague to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it seems to be working, uh, f- which also baffles me. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a person who has very strong opinions and, and mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, Frankly, so far left, I don't fit in the Democratic Party. So it's like it doesn't even matter. The, you know, I'm going to vote for them because I don't feel like I, I feel like it's a waste to vote for anybody else. But mm-hmm. the the only the the one thing that I've always been puzzled by when it came to Harris was uh, I, I'm a big fan of people being who they are all the time. Yeah. Like, like your personality never changes regardless if you're in front of friends, in front of family, in front of wives, in front of your business, whatever. You have the same personality. When it comes to Harris, it's like it, it's like you said, like they're trying to like mold her into a certain way and not allowing her to be who she is. So yeah. like when she's when she's doing like these on the street, you know, like quick interviews, stuff like that, you get like true Kamala Harris. You yeah. know, you get you when get she her. when she uh what did she have? She had, she like went and bought records. Mm-hmm. And she came out and she's like, look at the record I got. I'm so excited. Yeah. That yeah, was because, an awesome moment. Right. Give me because more the, of that. <laughs> because the thing is, like, when you when you hear people talking, you, you for so long, and I'm sure you noticed it with me and I noticed with you, you know how their cadence works. Mm-hmm. You know how you know how their projection of their voice comes out and everything when the, you know for who they are. <laughs> and when she's doing, you know, buying records, you know, going onto the street and just having like quick chats and shit like that, you get her normal cadence, her normal yeah. Her normal the, voice, it's just her normalcy. The best but. thing she and Walls have done since they, since the ticket was formed, was having that like fireside chat where they just sat around the table and got to know each other in front mm-hmm. of the audience. You know, yeah. I mean, there wasn't even an audience in the room with them. It was just a YouTube thing. But like, if they did that every week, almost like a like an FDR fireside chat, but it's it's Harrison Walls just hanging out. And like talking about what's going on in in the campaign, uh, when they're you know should they get into office, what's going on in the country, and, and things like that, it would humanize them. It would make them interesting. It would make them. Um, it would it would make us feel like we are participating in the process instead of it just like you know uh, fucking right now uh, you know Netanyahu goes and blows up a, a, a an entire village in Lebanon. And we get instead of instead of Biden having a spine and standing up and saying anything about it either way, like if he stood up and said, yes, we support the destruction of the Lebanese people. Cool. At least you took a fucking stand, you spineless jag off. Instead, what we get instead is uh, a leak where like, um, you know, Biden White House staffers say that Biden is very angry at Netanyahu for embarrassing him at the U.N. And it's just like, well, then get up and say it, Joe. You, f- right. yeah, right. You're still technically the president, but like you're still, yeah, man, you're still in charge. Uh, like I understand you may be trying to get something done, but like this isn't negotiating hostages with Russia, where you can, where you have to do it privately until it happens, and then you announce it. Yeah. This needs to be like, like we're we are watching, uh, dude. I have seen so many dead kids in the last eleven months, and I'm yeah. sick of seeing it. You know, and it's just like I really wish that that Biden would stand up and take a stand, and I, I wish Harris would take a stand. But because she had, by the way, the whole point of this, they haven't done that fireside chat since. 
And I think it's because for mm. for about two weeks, they didn't know what to do. And so they let Harris do whatever she wanted. And it was great. And then the Democratic consultants took back over because they they readjusted. And now they're pushing towards generic, generic Democrat. And then a generic Democrat can't take a stand on an issue. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to look back and see if I could find it. Uh, but the way you described it, I totally agree with you. It's like they're, they're not allowing her to be humanized. You know, yeah. it's almost turning her into kind of like a robotic thing. But anyway, it, it's it's similar to I think what Kennedy went through. Yeah, like they're like like we need we need a certain type of candidate. We will turn this guy into that candidate. You know, mm-hmm. you know, just a just just a just a veteran who is for the people and everything. He's a, he's just a normal guy and everything. But they molded him into something more. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's what's going on again. And that that's the only that's the only thing I do not like when it comes to candidates at all. Like if you're not really who you are, it's like it, it's a turnoff because if you're going to be you here, but then be somebody else over here, it's like which one are you? Right. Like are you are you are you pandering over here? Or you know, like like what is it? Like because because I just need to know who the real person is because that's the person I want to know about. Like I want right. to know about I want to know about the person who's 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 willing to talk about collard greens in the tub or buying records or you know, you know, you know, listening to rap music while getting high in college. Like if that's who you are, be that yeah. fucking person. Humanize yeah. yourself, you know? Um, yeah, and Whoever the fuck it is needs to figure out why this world is tearing each other apart. So yeah. whoever gets in there, figure out some shit. I get that. Like sometimes, like what's going on with Israel and Hamas? Is it Israel and Hamas? Yeah. Yeah, Israel and Hamas uh, and Hezbollah. Ukraine and Russia, uh, Taiwan and China. Yeah, there's. I mean, and, and this is these are just the the ones we talk about, right? I mean, there's yeah. there's an, there's a, an actual there's a civil war and genocide happening in Sudan. There's a civil war happening in Congo. There's a civil war and genocide happening in Myanmar. Like. Yeah. But yeah, the, none, none of these ones get the news. Yeah, it, and that's terrible. I, I didn't even yeah. know about any of that stuff. Um, yeah, so whoever gets in there, like, even though, like, you know, like, yeah, this doesn't directly affect us, down the line it's going to. Down the line, all these are going to come to a head, and there's going to be a huge fucking problem. And just like the last two world wars, we eventually had to get involved. So right. maybe we'd be more proactive instead of reactive this time and try to figure some shit out. You yeah. know, it's just, it, it's just, it's, that's the hope. Anyway, I'm, I'm not president. I wouldn't, I'm, I know as far as I can tell right now, I'm never going to be in a situation where I have to deal with like, like world powers going at it with each other and shit. I'll never know that fucking stress. I can understand a little bit why presidents are aging at a rapid rate in eight fucking years. Oh yeah. I, yeah. So I'll never know that stress. I'm okay. Never knowing that stress, but something needs to fucking happen. Because if it doesn't, it's going to get a lot worse, and it's going to affect us a hell of a lot more. So, yeah, yep. So, uh, anyway, yeah, those are my thoughts. I, I don't you just want you want to end it with that being our freaking thinking. Yeah, you know that? that works for me because it's just Archer again. So, <laughs> <laughs> perfect, uh, guys. Make sure you follow us on social media: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just by searching "This Freaking Show," and of course, you could uh, listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search "This Freaking Show," or if you want to watch the video podcast, you can do so over YouTube at Freaknet Studios. Freaknet Studios YouTube channel is also the place you're going to go to watch uh, Freaky Cemetery tours. That will kick off with episode one on October first. And go out through the entire month of October. So make sure you guys check those out. Make sure you subscribe over to YouTube and everything. And uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the Michigan cemeteries. And this is our last episode until we hit this freaky show next week. So Cartoon Joe is going to take a vacation until November. So maybe by the time I talk to Cartoon Joe, we'll have a uh, president in office that, uh, well, I guess either way, we're going to have a new president. It's going to be historic no matter what. That's right. So, uh Joe, you enjoy your uh, day off. I'll check out with uh, Freak Joe here uh, on our next episode. And guys, that's all I got. So as always, I am Travis C. And I'm Cartoon Joe. And thank you for listening to another episode of this freaking show. I'm out.